Welcome back to class. I want you to think about something. When your phone rings with a notification and you check it, you see that it's an email. What is the first thing that you look at when you receive a new email on your phone? The sender's name and the subject of the email, right? This tells you how important it is and if you should open it immediately. Also, since we're in this class on writing better emails, this should tell you how important the subject lines of your emails are. If your email has a poor subject, or worse, no subject at all, it may not even be read. Look at this email here. It just says, hello, professor. I have no idea how important this email is, and I may not read it at the time, and, or I may even just forget about reading it later. So we will finish our lessons on writing better business email by studying how best to begin writing an email. So we will continue with this process by uh, looking at this email we've been composing to Professor Johnson. But why are we starting at the beginning? with the subject line. A few reasons. First, we want to compose the email body before the subject line because the subject line serves as a summary of the core content in as few words as possible. We can't get a good sense of what you're going to write in an email until it is finished. Second, we fill in the recipient's name at the very last point. Because if for some reason there's an accident and you sent this email without it being finished, well, that could be a bad thing, right? So what are some things that a subject line must do? A subject line must be simple no longer than six to eight words. It can be shorter as long as it has the essential information, but if it gets too long, your recipient won't want to waste their time. It also needs simple, clear, and specific language. Again, remember, everyone's time is valuable, so keep it easy and to the point. I'll show you a few examples of this here. Uh, you can see here we've got uh, uh, some examples of a student in this case who wants to visit the instructor's office on Thursday with their name. That's pretty simple, easy, and useful. Uh, here's another one. A student wants to send their homework. Student name. And here's another one. A student has a question about next week's class. So again, these might be examples that you would use, especially in our classes. Now, back to the email. How would we go about summarizing this email that we've been composing together? What's the most important information here? Remember, the audience is Professor Johnson. What will she care about? Well, she's going to care about the absence. The student will not be attending business communications class next Tuesday, October 20th. So that's what we should write about in the subject line. Absent Tuesday, October 20th, J Park. Okay, so this tells us the student's gonna be absent on October 20th and even their name. Okay, that's that's pretty simple and to the point for this professor to read it quickly, know that they need to log it. Now, after finishing the subject line, let's move up one more step to the last point here and finish the recipient field. Click on the field and enter the email to Professor Johnson. Before sending, of course, review the email. Make sure it looks good. If there's any attachments that need to be there, make sure you attach them and click 
send. And that's it. You're now ready to begin composing your own emails to the standards we've set out in these tutorials. Now, don't forget to use the subject line to summarize your email contents using six to eight words in simple, clear, specific language. When you're ready, take the quiz on the next page, and I look forward to seeing your emails in the discussion boards later on. Thank you.